Have you got an old photo that you would like to restore but don't know how? In this series, I'm going to show you how I went from this to this. If you've ever wondered how people restore photographs or have always wanted to learn Photoshop, then this is the video for you. Welcome back to another episode of Genealogy TV and the first in the Walls Family Restoration Project. If we've not met before, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further, faster, but factually with your family research. We're going to get started on restoring that old photograph in just a moment, but before we do, I want to remind you, if you've not subscribed, please do so right here. Also, ring the bell so that you'll get notified of the next time we upload videos. Now, what you may not know is I am also a nature and wildlife photographer and a video professional as well as a genealogist. As a photographer, I've learned a thing or two about Adobe products. In this series, we'll be using Adobe Photoshop to restore this image. As a genealogist, I love to use my Photoshop skills to restore those old photographs. You know, the really old ones. So here in this Photo Fix series, I'm going to walk you through step by step how I restored this photograph, one tool at a time. Before we get started, we have some technical details we need to get out of the way. If you have old photographs that you would like to restore, make sure that you scan them on a flatbed scanner at a minimum of 600 dpi. The higher the dpi, the longer it will take to scan and the file size will be larger. 600 dpi is a good rule of thumb. Depending on the complexity of the work, I'll scan them as either JPEGs or PNG formats. If you don't have a flatbed scanner, you can take those images to your local copy center. Most of them have the scanning capability. I prefer to scan in color even with those old photographs because I like to keep a little bit of that old sepia tone color in my photographs, but that's personal preference. Don't use a feed scanner. You may risk destroying those old images. Now if you have a really old photograph that's in really bad shape, then you'll want to take a photograph of that image first with the best camera that you have and in good light, and then have a professional handle it from there. We don't want you causing any damage to those cherished old photographs if they're fragile. Also, for good restoration, you'll need to carefully remove the image from behind glass and the frame. Next, label the digital copy as the original scan and then make a copy of the original as the one that you'll restore and preserve the copy, the original copy, as an untouched version. Okay, now that we've gotten through the technical details, I encourage you to follow along with your own image. In this first video, I'm going to show you how to label the people in this image before we even start the restoration process. Using the Photoshop text tool is the first step in preserving our family history. If you'd like a written copy of these steps, sign up for my newsletter. There is a link in the show notes below and that will give you immediate access to the process that I'm using for this Walls Family Photo Restoration Project. Alright, let's get started. Uh, this is the Walls Family from Wilkes County, North Carolina to give you a quick view of a little bit more information. This is Melville Hampton Walls. This was my mother-in-law's family. And so what we're going to do is first label uh, the people in this photograph using Photoshop. And I firmly believe that every photograph should be labeled. And so I know, based on what my mother-in-law had told me, who these people are. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm first going to make a copy of the image so that I can do kind of a before and after. And how you do that is you create a, a background copy. And in this case, I've already done that, but I can get rid of this and show you again. So you take the background copy and you can control or command J depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC and you create a background copy. And then we can turn off the other one. And now we have a copy to work with without messing with the original. Now I am in one of my favorite workspace views. If you go to window and hit workspace and go to photography, this is the workspace I use most because I'm a photographer. So that's how I got to this view. You can also collapse these screens if you're not familiar with those, but we're going to be using the text tool here in just a second. We're going to need this uh, character pane. So we're going to grab the text tool, and we're going to draw a square and we're going to type the Walls family. Now I'm going to control A or command A to select all of that 
and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to scrub to the right to make the Walls Family uh, font bigger. And then you don't want to hit enter because while we're highlighted on all that font, uh, if we hit enter it will delete all that. We have to click away or click on another layer uh, to get rid of that. Now to come back to that we need to make sure we're on the right layer. Uh, so we come back to the text font and if we double click on the T it'll highlight that text again. So we can add other effects to it. We can uh, make it lo larger right now. This is good enough for what I'm doing for this scenario. Now if I want to put a stroke around that, let's take a look at that without it's just black. I could actually make that font white by double clicking on that T again. Click on the color and I could come over here and make that white if I wanted to. And then when we click away you can see that the font is white. Selecting the layer but not selecting the font we can come down to the effects tool and draw a stroke around it. So let me pull that over. So we can take a stroke and this stroke is rather large so we can pull that down to I don't know 8 pixels and say OK and that gives it a nice crisp edge if we want to use white with a black stroke. You can reverse that, do black with a white stroke um, but for now we're going to leave it that way. Now we have a lot of names here to fill in so we're going to get right to it. We're going to go back and we're going to select the text tool which we've already got. We're going to, we're going to deselect by just clicking in this open space, deselect the layer that we had, and we're going to draw it now with the select tool, with I mean the text tool, we're going to draw a new box, and we're going to type in Marvin W, and we don't see the W. Why? Because we need to expand this, and now we do. Now I'm going to select all this text because it's too large and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to scrub this down again to make it smaller. Now this is Marvin W. Walls. Now I'm not going to put the last name on all of this because uh, A for space but B we have the Walls family up here so I'm going to leave it that way. I'm going to deselect that area and I want to make that have a stroke just like up above and uh, you know what? I am not liking that white on black so I'm just going to make it black. I'm going to go back over here. Uh, I'm going to select the Walls family. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change that back to black. And I am going to turn off the effects with the stroke and I like that a whole lot better. So I'm going to do the same with Marvin. I'm going to come back up here. I am going to double click on the T to highlight the text. I'm going to change the color to black and there we go. And deselect and you can see it. Now instead of drawing a box every time, and I'm going to take the move tool by the way, you got to make sure you're on the right on the right layer, select the move tool to move the font. Alternatively you can hover over it with the alt key, um, but for now let's just stick with what we've got. So instead of drawing and typing and drawing and typing and drawing and typing, what I'm going to do is copy and modify. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to come down here and this little character here is the copy layer tool. And now I've got a copy. and But you don't see it because we haven't moved it. So we've got the move tool. We're going to move it to a new layer, a new space. And this gentleman's name is Clarence M. So we're going to double click on that and we're going to type Clarence M. Okay, now I like to make these nice and tight and close because I want to have room to move things around and I don't want my uh, handles getting on top of each other. I'm going to click away and now I'm going to click on Clarence and uh, it even gives you alignment tools. Look at that. See the pink lines? Those are showing us that we are in alignment. Okay, moving on. I'm going to grab this layer. I'm going to come down make a copy of it. We have a copy. I'm going to make sure my move tool is selected. I'm going to grab the copy and drag it over here. And this young man's name is J. 
James Arthur. So again, we double click on the T, we type James A, and we move on. Again, copy. I want her next, and her name is Aura. Double click on the T, change it to Aura, pull in the handles to where they're nice and tight, grab the Move tool, make sure we're still selected on the right layer, and we put her name on there. Next, we're going to copy that again, and we're going to take the Move tool, and we're going to move to our next person, and I'm going to put this above him. Double click on that to highlight the text. And this gentleman's name is C. Ernest. And we don't see it because we had made those handles nice and tight. So we're going to pull those open a little bit, grab the Move tool, and move it over him. Mevel. This is Mevel Hampton. Her name is Mary M. Now what we can do if we want, we can make the font slightly smaller to help squeeze that in there without covering the baby's face. This is Charles C. And the baby's name is Lizzie. So we double click on the T. Lizzie. And now we have all of the family listed. Now one last thing is we can take all of those fonts and we can group them. It's actually a link layers. And now if I wanted to, I can move all of those together. Not necessary, but we could. And we can turn them off one at a time if we want to see them on and off. Okay, so if you want to save it, then what you do is you come up here and you go File. And you want to save the Photoshop file, but you also want to save a JPEG or a PNG. So you can save it, and I've just left it as the original name. And you want to come down and click JPEG and then hit save. So that's a quick way to use Photoshop to label all of the names on a photograph. In the next episode we're going to start working on the photograph without all of those titles. Well now you've learned how to use the Photoshop text tool and label your ancestors in your images. I typically will keep two final versions of each image, one with the names and one without. If you're interested in Photoshop, you can purchase it from Adobe for as little as $10 a month at the time of this recording. I'll leave you some links in the show notes. If you're a student or an instructor, there are special discounts for you, so make sure you investigate those. As a reminder, for a copy of this process, sign up for my newsletter and get instant access to a free copy of my photo restoration process for this image. There is a link in the show notes for that too. In the next video, we'll start working on how to go about repairing that huge crack that's in this image. And it all starts with a good selection using, you guessed it, the selection tool. If you found this helpful, please give me the thumbs up and feel free to leave comments below. If you use Photoshop, I would love to hear about it. Personally, I love it. Before you go, please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified of the next time we upload these videos. Thanks for watching Genealogy TV.